The Great Storm of 1900 got its name because back then they didn't name hurricanes. And this one, like nothing before it and nothing after it. Scientists at that time didn't believe a catastrophic cyclone could form near Galveston because of how shallow the continental shelf is. Well, on September 8th, 1900, proved that theory wrong when a Category 4 hurricane slammed Galveston, killing 12,000 people, 8,000 right here on the island. The lack of forecasting tools and no real warning system made this hurricane the deadliest natural disaster in U.S. history. The waters of the Gulf were piled up by a formidable storm. Listen to the story captured in letters from the days after the storm. Then the more substantial buildings, containing their hundreds of terrified humanity, collapsed like shells crushing. Part of the Galveston and Texas History Center's collection, these powerful first-hand accounts capture the destruction. I lost everything I brought from me from Memphis. The technology that gives us such early information about storms simply didn't exist. So there's no satellite, there's no radar, there's no aircraft reconnaissance. So you can't really look down and see anything. You used uh, land-based observations of just temperature, pressure, and then what you can see above you to sort of extrapolate, you know, what might happen with the weather system. Lance Wood with the National Weather Service says there were some tools, but it was a far cry from what we have today. If a storm was coming, two flags would be hoisted up and news would travel by word of mouth. But in September 1900, as the storm wore down, it was too little too late. The powerful hurricane barreled into the town, wrecking shipping and destroying homes and buildings that sat unprotected on the coast. In 1900, there was no seawall. What was interesting is before the 1900 storm, it had been proposed actually that it might be a good idea to protect yourself from the ocean, but it had been rejected. But it was quickly adopted that this is the way we need to go. The seawall grew from 1904 through the 1960s to a little over 10 miles long and 17 feet high. They've made a few repairs because of erosion in the years since, but there hasn't really been much change to the overall design. This statue was built to remember the lives lost from the great storm of 1900. And while they were visionary 120 years ago with the seawall, today there is ongoing research on how we could design a more complete surge protection system to protect the city we love. I mean, isn't that incredible? So the seawall was completed in 1904. There was uh, some additional work done through the 60s. But really, I mean, think of them building that from 1902 to 1904. Yeah. And that is what still yeah. protects Galveston to the day. I Today. mean, that's incredible. That is amazing. It goes to speak to the technology way back then. But um, Cheetah, wasn't, okay, so correct me if I'm wrong here, but wasn't Galveston going to be like the next big city? It was. It was expected to be more like the Wolf street of the southwest yeah. okay. and because you know they started to see um, how hurricanes how features could really impact the city it really started to shift more inland to houston and yeah. that's why houston took the big boom but reading and looking into the great storm of 1900 <sighs> living here if you haven't heard of this or seen this i would do a quick google search and uh Absolutely. listen to that a little bit more we're also going to post this on